Hello and welcome to Tips and Tricks on Color Designer Plus version 3.0 webinar by Xrite and Matchrite. My name is Megan Wilfong and I'm a marketing manager for Xrite and I will be your webinar moderator today. Before we begin, I want to go over a few housekeeping points. Because of the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. During the web webinar, if you have questions, please use the questions function on the GoToWebinar panel. We will be monitoring the questions and towards the end of the webinar, we will have time for a short Q&A session. Finally, this webinar will be recorded and you will receive a link so that you can review the webinar at your convenience. With us today, we have Tim O'Rourke, an expert in color management and X-Rite technical support specialist for the retail industry. Hello, Tim, and welcome. Thanks, Megan. Welcome, everybody. Again, over on your uh, the webinar, over to the right is your questions. Uh, you know, I go ahead and ask questions as we go. Uh, periodically, I'll stop and look at those questions and hopefully get an answer to you. Uh, and then also maybe just show you through the software what, your, what the answer is to your question. If not, we'll get back with you uh, and respond to your question at, afterwards. Uh, so feel free to ask questions. Again, pretty laid back if you've been through this before. Uh, you know, we're just going to walk through some of the new features of the software uh, in the Color Designer Plus. Let's see if I can get this to move forward. What I want to do is we want to walk through some instrumentation stuff. I know uh, it's on Color Designer Plus tips and tricks, but certainly the instrument is a very important part of our software. Uh, you know, it's one of the main uh, ways we get color out of it. So I want to talk about what I call care and feeding for the instrument. Uh, then we're going to go through some of the new features. My collections in, is in the software, Color Navigator. Uh, the dispenser driver, where we'll be able to control the dispenser from our software. And then also talk about data management. There's some great stuff in there that we now can remove buttons, take out product lines, and that type of thing. So, great stuff. Um, certainly, this is the new version, the look of it, the uh, Color Designer Plus 3.0. Uh, so, yeah, we've added a couch. Uh, that's the new feature to the main page. Uh, but certainly inside the software, all kinds of new functions. But you kind of laugh, but it, it, it's a great software. Again, these features I'll show you. But it'll be nice for support because when you call, we'll say, does your software have a couch on it or not? So uh, good stuff from our engineering, at least differentiating it from the old software. So with that, uh, I'll jump right in. Uh, let me go back. Uh, I'll jump into some of the uh, software instruments uh, and what instruments are used. I'm going to go into a webcam. Uh, we'll see how that works a minute. Okay, you're seeing it there. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, great. So first thing I, I want to show are what are the four types of instruments that are typically used in the Color Designer Plus. That way you can kind of get a feel for uh, which instrument you, you might have and, and how we name those and support those. So I've got a little webcam here. I'm going to just kind of show you the four different instruments. This instrument here is what's called our RM400. Again, a lot of you might use that uh, as, as your instrument type. Uh, it's a little handheld, uh, but it does a good job of color matching. We typically use that for customers that are just getting into color matching, uh, their first instrument, that type of device. This is our older CF57 unit. Uh, this is the one you may have had for many years and then upgraded to the newer iViews or something like that. But this instrument certainly uh, has been around since uh, 1995. Uh, and then we certainly made changes to other instruments. But again, it's nothing more than the arm with the plunger, place the sample in there. Uh, again, that instrument really, uh, we continue to make it, uh, but we really haven't done anything to this instrument uh, since early, mid 
mid uh, 2005, 2006 type thing, but certainly standard in the industry. This is our newer type spherical instrument called the CI4100. And this instrument here uh, replaced the old spherical base. Now we have capability here where we can take measurements by the button if I have to take a sample. Um, but again, it's a very good instrument uh, comparable to the old bench tops we used to call these here. Our last instrument that we'll talk about and I'll show demoing uh, is our iView. This instrument certainly has been around since 2009 is when we came out with this instrument. Uh, it's been very stable, certainly a lot of features with the instrument. Those of you that have that, um, we want to be, I'll, I'll show you a couple tips on that. I also want to show you for the iView, we made what we call the iView stand. This allows us to keep everything in place, so the little chip clip, as we call it, has a place rather than in a drawer or gets lost. The sample holder is on the stand. This device, or this uh, jig, as we call it, it's priced at $195, so it's something that you're looking for, rather than the black max. Um, or the other parts that come with it. Here's the sample holder. Again, very important features or parts for the instrument to make sampling work. Uh, but those are uh, all can be now placed on this one stand. The instrument now has a home that it can sit in and take measurements and all of that. With any of the instruments, uh, we want to make sure that we clean them. Uh, on the eye view, we want to make sure we clean the four lenses. If you flip it over, uh, you've got one, two, three, and four. We want to make sure we clean those lenses before calibration. Make that a standard operating procedure. Again, clean the four lenses and the calibration plaque, okay, right there before you calibrate the instrument. Uh, it's important that you do that every time. On the other instruments, like the CI4100, uh, again, calibration uh, is the white plaque. We want to make that clean. We also found that we want to make sure uh, we blow canned air, keep this very clean. There's a very small port down in the bottom of the unit. You kind of see it there. We want to make sure we keep that clean. So we kind of take that straw from the canned air kind of bend it a little bit right into that little port in a couple sh short bursts of clean air to make sure that stays clean. Uh, but again, very, uh, this instrument here, we want to make sure that stays clean. Once a week, do that cleaning. This instrument here calibrates every day. This instrument, the same thing. We want to take canned air once a week and clean out the port there uh, and keep the calibration tile clean, always important. The last one is the RM400, same thing. So keep a can of canned air by your system. Uh, if you have the iView, keep a uh, alcohol wipes. Uh, we sell those, but just if you went to your Walgreens or uh, CVS, they sell uh, alcohol wipes or lens cleaners um, by Bosch & Law, uh, one of those uh, manufacturers. That's the uh, kind of thing you want to use with those. So, enough with the instruments. Again, keep them clean. And with the eye view, uh, if you're utilizing that instrument, keep it clean and keep the samples flat. And what I mean by that is, you know, this sample holder here, or this part that you may have attached to your instrument, it keeps the sample flat. One of the things we found with the eye view and not having any type of uh, way to keep samples flat. If I were to take a sample like this, I'll be, and let's say it's bent, the card is bent as you can see a little bit. I'm making you dizzy here. You can see that card is bent up a little bit. If I were to place that underneath the instrument in that bent position, that would cause a mismatch, even that little bit of bending. So it's important that if you're not, if you're not using the stand, Always utilize the sample holder. That way, when you slide a sample in, it holds the sample flat. And then that's the key to this instrument, the eye view. You get the two things that are important. Keep it clean and keep it flat.
again, last, I'll reiterate one more time. Uh, on the iView, keep it clean and keep it flat. Okay, great. Let me get out of the video. And I'll do, we also, uh, one of the things we do in the webinars is we can do what's called a poll question. So we're going to throw a poll question up. Those of you that were sleeping, we're going to kind of wake you up a little bit. Uh, what we want to know is what instrument type are you using uh, at your store? Again, you <clears throat> hopefully you watched it to know which instrument you have. Uh, out of the four. If you're not sure, uh, you know, there's the unsure button. And uh, but again, <clears throat> certainly we we uh, at X right, you know, the instrumentation is what we do very well. We know how to make that. So uh, make sure you keep them clean. Uh, the instrumentation it it's it's nine. It's probably eighty percent of the cost of that instrument. Okay. Did we lose this? Okay. Okay. Let me go back now. Let's turn on my. Uh, plus. Okay. Okay. Great. And I can see most of you are using the iView. Some of you have uh, the RM400. So. Uh, Poll question like that, we'll have another one later. But this is our new Color Designer Plus version 3.0. It's very similar, obviously, to the old Color Designer Plus versions 1 through versions 2.6. Um, but some of the features that we've added, I think, are, uh, you know, are worth that cost. Uh, typically, right now, uh, if you're on Color Designer Plus and you want to upgrade to the new Color Designer Plus 3.0, that cost is $495. So uh, again, that's uh, you know going through our sales. Um, we we'll certainly give you information on where you get hold of someone for that. Uh, but to do Color Designer Plus, some of the things I wanted to show you. Uh, first things when we go to Color Lookup. Okay, we now have a button called My Collection. We have a button called Other, which are all your competitors' colors. And then we have the All button, which are both your formula book and your uh, com uh, competitors' fan decks. So uh, one of the things that's nice, hold on here, I'm just going to, if I go to my collections, these are typically now your formula books. So when I go and click on, let's say, the Do It Best, and I type in blue, you know, the old software, when I hit search and you hit, you know, it would take upwards of 40 seconds in some cases to uh, formulate that color or try to bring up the colors inside of your own fan deck or formula book. So now it comes up a little bit qu quicker than before. I can select the color and walk through and get that formula book. Okay, so if I go back home, click on Color Lookup, you know, now that searching through my own colors uh, is a lot faster. And that's just through my collections. So really, you're creating your own template of what Fandex you want to search through in a much faster way. So I'll type Sky here, and we'll go through the color collection. Uh, true values. Again, you know, here with this webinar, I, I certainly don't play favorites. We sell to many co-ops and stores, uh, but I want to kind of walk through different scenarios with different companies that we uh, we connect with. So uh, certainly I'm not trying to play any favorites there. You'll also notice that one of the, like, true value, this is a tip that I think a lot of people don't understand. Um, if your color comes up and it doesn't have a color swatch associated to it, so like here, dusty lilac doesn't have an associate, doesn't have a color representation, that is a formula book. You cannot cross match it into any other paint lines. It only is uh, allowed to be a formula book in the system. 
So when I click on Dusty Lilac, it only takes me into the true value portion of their formula book. And you'll see up here, this is a formula book. It gives me the formula, but I know that when I find it, when I do a color search inside here, okay, I'm gonna just click all collections and type sky. And it's just now it's just now it's going through just those three, so uh, it shouldn't be as long as it would be if I had all of my collections there. Um, so it allows me to grab that color with the sky on it. It gets a little bit slow because I'm running through the internet. Okay, well, it's probably through the webinar here is making it really slow. I apologize for that. But. Sorry. Hmm. I mean, it must have to do with being run through this webinar. I'm going to try and back to that. Let me go back in a minute. plans. Again, as we were saying, if I type, uh, if I search, and in this case here, I'll search through the Clark and Kensington, you'll notice here that it's, everyone inside like A's has a color associated to it. So that means if I select one, it allows me to go and do that color through any other paint line. So I can cross-reference it into any other paint line. If I come back here and let's select the true value, and you'll notice here I have some that don't have a swatch and some that do. So if I click on acclimation, notice it's not taking me right to the formula book. It's allowing me to cross paint lines. So that will happen if you have multiple paint lines on your system. If you just carry the if you just carry true value and that's it then it'll go right to formula book regardless of that. But most systems here, again, if I do the do it best, you'll see some of that also, where some of the swatches have it and some of them don't. And again, that's just based off of the paint companies um, either allowing us to uh, create that uh, color swatch or it's just a formula book. If it's a case where you need to cross paint lines, like let's say this amber magic, you can custom match it. So instead of here where it's gonna to go to a formula book, you know, I can come back and go, okay, that color 
you know, is not available, I can come out and go to color match and now take that chip off the chip rack and measure that sample through. Okay. So the color lookup, just like we said, if it's got the color swatch, I can cross paint lines. If I don't, then I have to go through formula book only. So what's nice is, again, my collection, these are my colors, however I want, uh, arranged. I might put in a popular fan deck that a lot of people come in and use, but again, now I have that option of finding the color, walking through and formulating inside my paint line. Again, just like a custom match, okay? One of the other things the software has and I want to show you is what's called Color Navigator. So an example would be someone brings in a object from their house. Uh, in my case, it's a coffee cup with a very nice blue kind of stone look. Uh, one of the things I could do is go to Custom Match, formulate the color or go through and say, okay, you know, I'll put the cup up there, it's kind of rounded. Uh, I do a measurement, and I'm going to walk through and formulate it uh, through the true value, interior, latex, eggshell, easy care, gallon, auto base, daylight, and, and I find I get, a custom, I get a match for it. Down at the bottom, you'll notice a couple things here. One, edit, where I can edit that formula. Let's say I want to make it 10% lighter, because I'm always a little skeptical on non-paint-related articles or, or samples, and it might be a piece of fabric. In this case, it's a cup that has a stone look to it. You know, yeah, it gives me a great number that looks good, but I might go 10% lighter and formulate that and don't put in as much as, uh, as that full formula, just because I don't want to be too dark. So it's always nice if I'm lighter. So the edit stream uh, will do that. Um, down here is what's called our navigator. And that's where I can click on that. And what it does is it goes out and finds the closest color that's on the chip rack. So what's nice is, you know, yeah, I'm not, I'm always a little skeptical of non-paint related samples they bring in. It's a piece of plastic. Sometimes it's a, a shutter, uh, you know, anything like that. I can go and formulate it through and, and then click on Navigator and see that there's a color, port blue, which gives me the closest match to my chip rack. So in this case here, true value by design. You know, if I was an A's person, I could do the uh, colors for your life or your colors, uh, color palette. Uh, it'll go out, switch over, and then again, give me the closest color match to my chip rack. Again, I think it's a great feature because it's now giving me something where, hey, I can go not only from formulation, but from the main screen. Again, it's almost, it's, it's like the color harmony we had before. So now someone brings in a real different sample. I can go to measure, measure the sample, and it goes right out to the color navigator, gives me my closest chip. Let me go grab that chip off the rack, compare it to the cup that I just measured. The customer says, oh, that's close enough. Great. Now what I do is I click on blue herring, and I walk through, and it's going to give me the formula book for that. So now, you know, now I've got buy-in from the customer, this is what I want, and now I formulate it through my paint line. So uh, again, very nice feature that way. I can now do that right from the software itself. I don't have to just go grab chips off the rack because I, I know it's not going to be a great match if I try to do it because a lot of you have that experience. But here's a nice feature called Color Navigator where I can do that right from the start, get my chip off the rack, or if I had to, I can formulate through. Okay, so that's a nice feature called Color Navigator. Another feature inside the software is allowing us to 
use the dispenser, uh, control the dispenser from one computer. So in this case here, I go do a true value color. Let's say I do the uh, Acapulco interior latex, eggshell, easy care, gallon. I now have my print, save, and dispense. If I click on dispense, it's asking me to bar to scan the barcode. Now, in some, some cases, your dispenser, you have a barcode that you have to uh, scan to make sure it's the proper base. Some of you might not have the barcode, so the software would go right to dispense, and off you go. So the new flow of data says, okay, you're going to have to barcode the base. Once that's done, it's ready to dispense. So it's a nice feature uh, where we can control the dispenser, whether it's a hero, whether it's a fluid management or a core op, uh, and be able to do that. One of the caveats to it right now, though, in version three is we certainly, if you're looking to do this, you need to call your dispenser company to find out how to obtain the driver to load on your match right system. So at this point, I know uh, the hero uh, has a driver for it, uh, and so does Corab. Uh, fluid management is still testing it. So that one, uh, you, you may have to wait a little bit, but they're in the middle of testing. Uh, but it's worth, uh, again, if you're looking, interested in doing that, you can call your dispenser company and find out if that's available. So the way it happens is I'm going to go into settings, click on unlock. I can go to my dispenser. Here I can go into my settings, and I can select all the different brands, and then from there, I have to select then what type of driver. So it's different than any version we've had before. You'd have to select that version, and then allow it, select your color and set, and basically you'll configure and copy over your files from the dispenser computer to this, and you're off and running. But again, get hold of your dispenser company to see if that's available. One of the other features I want to talk about um, is when we do color matching. I shouldn't say it's a feature, um, but it's a good tip. I always like to talk about it. Let's say that you're going to do a SAMP. Uh, someone brings in a chip for you to measure. You measure the sample. You walk through and uh, do it in your paint line. So they were looking to do their living room, so interior, latex, and then which product to get. This is, you're new to color matching. Uh, you know, this is where you're communicating with the customer on what do they want to do uh, with this paint. And then, of course, based off cost. So some of this, uh, you know, they may just want the, want the color and cost is not an option. So uh, we can select that, select the sheen, what size. Uh, the, one of the screens that comes up when you color match or do a FANDAC match is the auto base. This is just the computer selecting which base is best for this color. So you typically will select that. Okay. The next one is your auto illuminant. Use daylight for everything. You know, I've been doing this for 20 some years. Uh, and, and you want to use daylight for every custom match or FANDAC match you use. Uh, typically two things. One, most people paint during the day, so the predominant light in that room is probably daylight. And when we match colors, we're, we're matching to what light source your paint, this color is going to be in. Because as we know, depending on what light you're looking at color, that color will change. So when we formulate, it's just as important also to what formulation do we want to use light source to get that color right. So you use daylight for everything. Um, in fact, today's world, you can't even get incandescent. So what happens with auto illuminant is when you select auto illuminant, if you selected an interior product, it selects incandescent light as its light source. If you selected exterior, it selects daylight. Well, 
you go, you don't even sell incandescent lights anymore. You know, those are almost gone. Uh, you know, now it's all the LEDs or the fluorescents. Uh, so daylight's a great light source to use. Um, you know, as you can see here, let's just maybe maybe this is a good example. So it's giving me a formula using EV nine four four nine shots four and a half. If I went back to the light source and selected incandescent, again, you know, it doesn't even show the same formula. Doesn't mean that this one's not right, but just, you know, here's a great example of how formulation changes based off the light source. So, great example. Feature, though, that that's important is use daylight for everything, but let's say I mix this color up, saved it to a customer file, uh, saved it there. I mix it up, find out that oh, it's just a little bit off. Something's wrong with it. Don't know why, but that happens, okay? We all know that this is not a perfect system because you don't know, is it the instrument, is it the dispenser, is it the paint, is it the colorants? All these things that could cause an issue, for whatever reason, this is a little bit off. I want you to use this correct button down here at the bottom. So anytime you do a fan deck match or a paint, a custom match, the correct button will be there. What it's asking you to do is show me what went wrong. Take a little paint out of the can, apply it to a white index card, <coughs> hair dry it, and then measure it into the system because it's saying, you know, measure what went wrong. So in this case here, I'll measure something a little bit lighter and find out that what it does is it knows exactly what you tried to do, okay, but what went wrong with it. And so in this case, uh, I actually, it was a little bit, uh, the sample that I measured, uh, the mist tint uh, was a little bit off. So now it's saying, go ahead and add this to correct that color. So those colors that are a little bit off, you can adjust with the correct button. Don't be afraid to use that, um, you know, when you get a custom match. Because not every color is perfect coming out of the system. And just because it shows a DE value that's very good, that doesn't always correlate to I'm going to get a perfect match after I mix it all up. So use the correct button there. <clears throat> One of the last features I want to walk through is in our settings, in the Color Designer version 3, we have what's called data management. And so from here, you can see now on my system, I carry a lot of different paint lines. And you'll notice that I don't even have them checked. So these are the paint lines that you carry in your store. Now, for me, I carry all kinds because I have to support all kinds of different paint lines. But you'll notice I only have a few selected here. Okay. And those are the ones that, we, that show up on the button when I go to do a custom match. So if I wanted to add the product, uh, let's say I wanted to add the paint line Davis Paint, I click on that, go to the home page, do a custom match, measure sample, okay, guess what? I've added Davis Paint. So that data management, not that that's the big feature, but certainly that's how we can utilize paint lines. I can add or take away paint lines. Now, the nice thing is, let's go to products. Let's say, well, I'm a do-it-best store, you know, but I don't carry the refresh line. It's just not a product I carry. So what happens is I get store, I get my associates that see this button. Well, wait a minute, we don't carry it. Now, inside my own product lines, okay, I'm going, to do, I'm going to enable these again just so we can see it. So if I go to the home page, I do a color match, measure the sample, I come out, I'm going to do the do it best geo shades, interior, latex, down here, there's the refresh right there, right? So I don't even carry that product. So why confuse my users, right, for something I don't even carry? So now, if I come out, go to my settings, one, two, three, four, unlock, 
go over here to data management, products. We said, we don't even use the refresh, okay? Let's get that out of there. Now I go home, I do a color match and move, because I removed that refresh, it's not even in there anymore. So all that, these products that I don't carry, I now don't have to worry about that button being on there. So not only can I remove paint lines, but I also can do things inside of products that are just not there. So I know in the ACE line what's nice is, guess what, I can take out all of that old, where the button says ACE new bases or ACE old. Well, I don't have to worry about the old anymore. You know, that was four years ago and I've, I've used that product up. So I could take those out of there and make it nice. One of the last features that's also uh, really awesome in Color Designer version 3 is our updates. You know, the updates are what you get for, uh, you know, adding paint lines, new formula books, new fan decks, whatever changes happen, and you know, you have to give us your CBO number, right? That's your number that tells us exactly what's on your system. So when you call our support line, and we typically say, well, what's your CBO? That's the number we need. What's nice now is in the update world, in version three, we can automatically update it. If your system is on the internet, we can, you can schedule this to go out, look at our server, and see if there's any updates for your system based off of your CBO. So when I click on update now, it goes out, tries to look, tries to see what needs to be added, and I'll see if I can show that screen real quick. So in this case here, let me see if it switches over. Yeah, it's showing me here's all the updates that you need for your system. So I can begin, begin updates, uh, which will go through that process. I'm not going to do that at this point, but you'll notice that uh, it's giving me that option that goes out. Once it's done, it will then uh, let, notify you that the updates happened and here's what's been loaded on your system. So awesome feature there uh, for that to do. Uh, I'm going to stop and do one more question here, um, our poll question. Just want to see who's, uh, you know, who's running version 3. Again, if you don't know, that's fine, uh, but it does give us the uh, kind of numbers who's out there. You know, number, uh, if you're unsure, what's nice is now you can go back and look and go, yeah, I've got a couch, so I'm on version three. You had the older version, Color Designer Plus, uh, it's kind of a, but it's a black, grayish background, unlike this, which is blue. So. Uh, again, awesome stuff. Um, I'm going to close the paneling now. Uh, I see a few of you, you know, again, most of you are not there. We just released this back in the uh, late summer, early fall, so it's only been out a couple months, um, but it's awesome. Uh, I, I think there's some great features. That automatic update, uh, you know, in your dispenser allowing that to happen. Uh, you know, with a dispenser brand, doing it direct to our software, um, allowing the uh, system to do the color navigator, you know, that's huge when I can get someone to buy in. You know, I don't want to mix this up because I've had issues with this color or with this type of sample before. You know, I'm just going to go to Color Navigator. I'll take that paint stick of that dark red that maybe I don't have so much luck with, measure it, uh, and, and just go to Color Navigator and see what happens. So uh, it's a great software. You know, again, here was a paint stick, but it's giving me some close colors. I can then select it, 
customer buys in, guess what? It's a lot easier for, re for me to remake baking cookies, which is a formula book, so when they come back a week later uh, and need another gallon, uh, they don't, you know, if I didn't save it to customer files, you know, they'd have to bring their sample back in. And this way, you know, hey, you've got a printed label that shows baking goods and baking cookies, and they're off and running. So great stuff for that. Uh, and, and then again, apologize for the earlier looking up, but certainly my collections allows you to select, and I'll show you where that is, it allows you to create your own um, my collections. So just like here, you've got your paint lines that you carry, and then you'll also have the My Collections associated to it. So uh, this allows me now to create that preferences that I want uh, versus the long searching through everything else. So uh, great stuff. Certainly appreciate everybody's time. Are there any questions or anything anybody's uh, wondering about? Yeah, there is. Uh, Gary's asking if you use the correct button after a mistint color match, do you use a new can or just add to the existing mistint? Great question. Yeah, so basically when you do a color match, you're going to add it to uh, the can that's already there because we're saying, look, you mixed it up and for whatever reason it came out came out a little bit wrong. I select correct, and this is assuming, you know, you have the can. Now, if you've taken, you know, a bunch of paint out, it wouldn't work, but I can measure the mistint. This screen right here tells me exactly what you need to add to make that happen. So if I have an automatic dispenser, I just click dispense, put the can back underneath, and I'm off and running. It's a case that I need to dispense manually, uh, print out the label and uh, dispense that right into the can. Good question. Uh, any other questions? Looks like Sarah has a question. Can okay. you merge customer files? Okay, good question. In our software uh, under customer files, under customer files, what you'll notice is with uh, probably she's got older system or two systems. If you go into settings, one, two, three, four, unlock, customer files. Uh, if you go into uh, what I call import, export, if you import a separate database of color designer into a second system, uh, you go through the import. It will then import that other database on top of um, the one that exists there. So it'll basically merge the two together. What may happen is uh, in the old, some of the older software or even newer stuff, um, if I went into customer files, uh, in some cases, you know, you'll have Tim O'Rourke with a capital T and Tim O'Rourke with a small t. So to the system that says no, you're you know you're totally different people, you know, capital T versus small T. So to us that's almost like a duplicate. Uh, if that's the case and you merge and you have lots of duplicates, get hold of our uh, applications team. Uh, in fact, I'll show you that right now. Let me do this. I want to give you some. Uh, okay. Switch over. Come on. Okay, um, yeah, here's the, 
Here's the phone number, certainly. Uh, and then Nick's got another question I'll answer in a second. Here's our support number. The numbers have changed. The phone number is the same, the 1-800-572-8626. And then option three and option five will get you to our support team. The old days, it was just option three and four, and you were done. You got to one of us. The software support, meaning if you need to know if you need updates for your system, that's now option one. Anytime that you have questions, certainly email us at mrsupport at xray.com. You know, that's myself and Jason, who is also a, a technical uh, support specialist or second level. Uh, email us. You know, that's what I said. If you have issues with your database, customer you duplicate aim, duplicate names or numbers, back up your customer files, email that MR support your files and let us know that you've got duplicates. We've got a little software here we can run through and get rid of some of that stuff. Um, it's not anything that's in your software, whether it's new or old, we'll have to do some of that. But let us know that you're interested in having that done by MR support and, and we'll certainly reply right back to you. Um, Nick had a question. What was Nick's question? Uh, he said he ran into a Valspar using the same color name in both Do It Best and Ace, but the formulas don't match. So I don't know if the question is you did a formula book and the formula is different than if I did a Fandex match, or you did a Fandex match inside of Valspar, and you did a fan deck match inside inside of Ace and got two different formulas, most definitely. You know, the paints that are used for the paint companies are all uh, calibrated here through our lab and through, you know, they send us paint. We then uh, calibrate the bases to the colorants that are used. So the colorants are totally different from one paint company to another, uh, unless like you're saying your Ace and Valspar uh, could be the same colorant set. But uh, I would agree that two, a fan deck could be measured in for one company and measured in for another. And, and again, that could cause a difference. But uh, I, I suspect you know, that that can happen very easily. It's like the old days, people would, pull a formula book, print it out, they would grab a chip, measure it, and then get a different formula than what the formula book shows, and then they would say, well, then that, your system can't be right. Well, a formula book was made by the paint company, and they're able to adjust it and get the color exactly right with corrections, like you were, which you saw me do earlier. So the formula has been adjusted to be dead on for a formula book. In the fan deck, when I take a measurement, you know, I can make that color 3,000 different ways. And I may not put the top formula as the same colorant set that your formula book uses. So, uh, you know, be a little, don't use that as a test to show whether your system's working or not. Is it, is, if I match a color card to a formula book that I'm not getting the same formula, you know, the real test is, you know, you should make sure your instrument and your databases are up to date. So make sure your instrument's clean and calibrated, you know, and then also make sure that you give us a call uh, to find out if you're up to date as far as your paint lines and uh, formula books and all of that. You know, that can be an issue too. So good question. Hopefully I answered that. But uh, let's take another quiz or one more question. We actually have. Two more questions. Okay. And one of the questions is from Jeremy, and he asks, can formulas be sent to the dispenser wirelessly? They can. Our, syst our, our system right now, our computer, has a wireless connection. So if the two computers are able to communicate through a wireless network, uh, yes, you could actually uh, just kind of like a network. We'll save the file, and as long as the other computer's able to see that directory uh, on the two computers, then yeah, that wireless is fine. All right, 
And the last question is from Travis, and he's wondering about other formulas, such as Rust-Oleum countertop transformation. How do we get those to be included? Okay, yeah, and that's again a phone call to our software support. If you're, uh, if you're just bringing the product on from Rust-Oleum, um, there is a cost to adding databases to a system. I want to say they're like 390 bucks to add a paint line onto an existing system. Um, but again, that 390 bucks you could get back from the paint company. I know we'll charge you for it. Uh, and then typically you have the paint company credit you back that amount uh, because you're going to sell their paint. So uh, even though you may say, geez, they're charging us for that, you can get that back typically. But yeah, that's a phone call to our software support. Uh, again, have the CBO number of your system in hand, and uh, that's nothing more than, again, an, an easy email uh, update, and, and you're off and running. So, good question. Well, that was the last question. Okay. Well, again, uh, we don't always have to use an hour, but uh, appreciate your time. We actually have another one of these in, in a couple of weeks. Uh, so if you go out to x um you can see or sign up and get more people on. This is this has been recorded, uh, so if you need to uh, show other associates, uh, you'll get a link and be able to do that. Yeah, yep, you'll again, get the link tomorrow. Yep. Uh, again, I appreciate your time. Certainly give us a call. We appreciate your business. So any kind of questions, uh, we're here to help you. Thank you. Thank you.